ears gonna hear me Through the spirit we see clearly They swinging that you get near me Now your boy blowing the trumpet I used to pull up and dump it Toting them guns out in public Riding on off, that was fun shit Boy, I don't flex for the IG Wanna go strip a strip, nigga, try me Keep a scallop, but he right beside me To break the laws of God, I like this all right, first and foremost, we're going to start off by saying, Ka Hala, Yahweh, by Shimei Shai. Let's all praise to the Most High God of Israel, in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Christ. We are the Hebrew Israelites of the Sakari San Francisco sect, out here teaching peace and prosperity to the 12 tribes uh, of Israel who are the so called Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, and uh, preaching the, the downfall of this wicked kingdom, man, known as Babylon the Great. Uh, so we're just going to go back into the same thing, man. Um, Teaching our people that they need to trust in in, in the true the one true God whose name is Yahweh, man, our God, the so-called Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. We have to come back to to this Bible and, and start understanding uh, who this Bible is for and who it's pertaining to, and who the who the the Most High Creator um, chose out of all the people in the world to, to to love and be His, man. And that's the so-called Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans who are the Israelites of the Bible, man. Um, go ahead and give me that first, Danny. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 115, verse 9. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He, he is their help and their shield. Says, Israel, trust thou in Yahweh, man. He is, he is uh, our help and our shield, man. So all these other things that we trust in, man, um, like, the, like this science and all this, this fictional stuff, all this, all this uh, garbage that we trust in, man, it's time for us to take heed to the Lord, man. And, and, and return back to these scriptures in this Bible, man, because this Bible is more than just it's a uh, more than just a book, man. It's a history book. You got that? This is a history book of our people, man. And we know that when we went when we went to school and all this and that, our enemies who, who run these schools and fund these schools, they didn't teach us the truth uh, in, in history of our people. The only thing they told us that we were slaves, man. And that's the only thing that our people are, are, are familiar with. Uh, when it comes down to being so-called black or Latino, man, it's just being a slave, man. But our history goes back further than that. Go ahead. Book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 9. For, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. That's not it. 37 and 39. 9 and 9. Psalm 9. Book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 39. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. The salvation, right? This this thing that everybody, uh, uh, this concept everybody's familiar with, right? Uh, getting saved, right? Go ahead. It, it, it said what? But the salvation of the righteous, of the righteous, man. We know that the righteous is is is, is pertaining to the, the children of Israel, man. Because when you look at the wicked, most of the time in the Bible, it's talking about these heathen nations, man. So who are the righteous? It's the saints, man. The Lord's, the the children of Israel, the Lord's people, man. Go ahead. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. Uh -huh. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Yeah, the Lord is our strength in our time of trouble, man. When, like when we're going through all these afflictions, right? Because when we look around, the people that's being afflicted and being oppressed in America and across the world is the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Right? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Got it. Verse 40. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them, and he shall deliver them from the wicked. The Lord is going to deliver the Israelites from the wicked, man, from amongst all these other heathen nations that's that's uh, uh, helping our downfall, man. Right? Go ahead. And he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Because they trust in him, man. For real. And that's this is this is what's going to happen. The Lord is going to save the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans that's doing God's will, man, and keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. He's going to save us out of this place, which is a which is a hellhole for us, man. America is a hellhole to our people, man, because looking past all the all the money and uh, fortune that our people sometimes acquire here, man, this place is not is is it's nothing but death here for us, man. This place is, is, is not our home, man. We belong in Israel, man. That's where we belong. That's that's our home, man. Right? You got that, Danny? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 9, verse 9. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. For the what? For the oppressed. The Lord's going to be a refuge for the oppressed, right? We just, we just identify who's the oppressed scattered across the world here, man. Go ahead. A refuge in times of trouble. 
Verse 10, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, for thou Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. The people that know the, na the, the name of the Lord is the Israelites, man. The Lord revealed his name over to us, man. Yahweh, right? So that's who, th this is who these scriptures is talking about. Like, the church and everything try to make it seem like it's about the whole world getting saved and uh, everybody coming together in this one world order, one world religion, all this garbage, man. That's not, that's not... That's not what the Bible is about, and that's not what God's about. God's about separation, man. He don't want us to be uh, alongside with these Europeans, man, or these Chinese people, man, or these Arab, all these all these other nations that have their hand in our captivity. The Lord don't give a damn about them, man. And that's that's the truth coming out the Bible, bro. You got, uh, let me get, let me get uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 36. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 36. Lynn, what's that man talking about? What's he talking about? Can you prove that? Go ahead and get that. Where, where does it say Christ died for everybody in the Bible? Hey, hey, you can you can talk to him, but you can't talk to us? Uh, we just want to know where does it say Christ died for everybody in the Bible? Go to go to Luke one and seventy, and then oh you already got, you already got yeah you go to Luke one and seventy now. Start at sixty. Start at verse sixty eight. You got you got you got Acts five. Go ahead and read that. Hey hold on hold on read that. Did he said Christ died for everybody. Look at Acts chapter five verse thirty. For the Lord uh, that's a lot. God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Uh -huh. Whom ye slew and hang on the tree. The God of our fathers, right? Go ahead. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior to give repentance to Israel. To give repentance to who? To give repentance to Israel. So that's who that's who Christ came to give repentance for, man. And, and, and came to save. It's going to be for the Israelites, man. Not for everybody in the whole world, man. That, that's 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 Christian uh, uh, mythology that they try to make, make up, man. Right? Give me that in Luke. This, this is the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Verse 69. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Now, there's that word salvation again. It says for us, right? This is all talking about possessed. These are possessive nouns being used, man. Right? Go ahead. Verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Uh -huh. Which have been since the world began. Uh -huh. Time, man. So the Lord raised up a, a, a savior to be for the Israelites, man. Not for the whole entire world, man. Hey, hey, bro. Um, I didn't really get your name. My bad, bro. I just wanted to ask you a few things. Like, have you ever heard this type of stuff before? Because I, I know you with my boy, and he heard it before. You heard it a lot. Oh, this your first time. You got any questions about it? It's good. Uh, in the instant. I, I'm addressing you not to like call you out or anything, but it's like it's obvious that you are people. So like, I rather give this time to to you know explain it to you personally, right? So what's what's your um, ethnic background on your father's side? Where, where, like, where's your father from? He from Mexico? Okay, so your your father's Mexican. What do you know about the history of the Mexicans, man? You know about the Aztecs and stuff like that, man? You know about you know those people were Mexicans and or or who we identify as like the Aztecs and you know uh, the ancient Mexicans like that. They were they were in the Bible. You know about that. You know what the word Aztec means? It's, it's made up of two Hebrew words, Az and Teca, which means time people, right? Go ahead and give me that in, um, in First Chronicles real quick. So basically, the importance of this message, what we doing right here, bro, is. We're telling our people, which are the, the so-called blacks, Latinos, and natives, that this Bible is more than just a Harry Potter book that people try to make it seem like, right? This is this is our history, man. And the information in this book, if our people would listen to it and read it and try to get an understanding from it, we wouldn't be confused about what's going on in the world today. And we wouldn't be confused about who we are and, and our position in the world today and what God wants us to do, right? So I'm gonna give you a little bit of, uh, of a breakdown on the information that the Bible is about and, and what it has to do with your life, right? Go ahead. 
it should be first chronicles 12 and 32 i think you found it that's it first chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 and the children of issachar children of issachar right now it's, it's funny because um a lot of like um, mexicans for the most part know um that there is a christ right but through the system of uh us being like uh colonized and stuff like that we kind of lost that 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 information about ourselves but go ahead Issachar is, would be the, the who the Mexicans are today, right? Go ahead. And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the time. They had understanding of the times, right? So, what, are, what were the Aztecs well uh, like known for? They were they were like astrologers, right? They came up with the 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 Aztec calendar or whatever, and then you got the Mayans too, which is the um, which which would be the the, the Guatemalans and uh, uh, Pan Panamanians and stuff like that today, right? Yeah, those people were, were the Mayans, so they had the Mayan calendar and stuff like that, right? But this is speaking specifically about the ancient Mexicans, which were the Aztecs. You guys knew how to read the stars and the moon and stuff like that, so you guys are the time people, right? Go ahead. And the Bible just confirmed that the, with the Aztec, the, the meaning of it, and it just said you guys understood the time, right? Go ahead. Children of Issachar were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. To know what Israel ought to do, right? So you would be an Issachrite because of your father. Go to Numbers 1 and 18. Everything in the Bible as far as your ethnic, ethnic background always goes back to your father and your father only because the man carries the seed, right? So the, the importance about Issachar is, is, is that you're part of the 12 tribes of Israel, which is God's favorite people, man. That, that's God's only people, right? He created everybody else, but he chose Israel to be his only people that he cared about. You, have you ever heard of that? Yeah, right? And it is, are you Catholic or anything? Your family's Catholic? Good, man. Stay away from that church, man. Church is a, 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 nothing but a big-ass whorehouse, man. Ain't nothing ain't nothing there for our people, and they ain't teaching our people nothing, man. But how to be better slaves, man. So this is where you'll find the real truth, man. Just studying the Bible and being a, a, amongst uh, like-minded brethren, man. Go ahead. What you, got? what you got? Yeah, read that Numbers first. Book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared the pedigrees of their families by the house of their fathers. So they, declared, they declared their ethnic backgrounds by the house of their fathers, what tribe they came from, right? So you would be uh, uh, Issachar, right, man. Let's, let's talk about uh, the children of Issachar. Read that in Genesis 49. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 14. Issachar is a strong ass. Couching down between two burdens. So it says Issachar is a strong ass, right? And ass is referring to a donkey, right? That's a, that's usually the symbol that they uh, that they refer uh, Latinos or the Mexicans to, right? Like a donkey, right? It says uh, crouching down between two burdens. You know what that that those two burdens are? When you look at Mexico, where is Mexico out at on the map? It's between. Uh, 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 Central America and, and, and North America. So those two burdens is America, right? And, and it's going to explain why. Go ahead. Verse 15. And he saw that rest was good and he and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. Became a servant unto tribute, right? So if, upon uh, the arrival of you guys finding this land and stuff like that, that's talked about in the book of Second Ezra, we can go to that next you, you guys, you know, found Mexico, you guys came to Mexico, came to the Americas or whatever, right, and you guys saw that the land was good, it was a fruitful land um, we look at Mexico it, it's, it's flourishing in the, in the agricultural uh, standpoint, right, like you guys it's, it's, it's a lot of green there, right it's a lot of a lot of uh, uh, natural resources of the land for you guys to flourish and make crops and all this and that right but then as it was talking about you guys became a servant right who did you guys come become a servant to because you guys weren't always speaking uh spanish i don't know if you're aware of that did you know that spanish wasn't you guys's first language hebrew words or, or dialects of hebrew so who did you guys learn spanish from and who did you guys become servants to i'm sorry uh, I mean, let's 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 be a little more specific. Like, yeah, America, but w what people came over and conquered you guys? The Spaniards, right? The Europeans, right? So, 
and just said you guys became a service, uh, became service, man. When the Europeans came over, bro, the same thing is they try to they try to separate your people and my people uh, because most people consider me to be black, right? They try to make a separation between us and make it seem like we're not the same people. And, and, and that you guys didn't go through what we went through and we didn't go through what you guys went through. But we all went through the same thing and we it was just different. We just got off on different uh, exits uh, of the boat, man. We just got off on different ships, man. You guys, when the Europeans came over, they did the same thing to y'all. They made y'all worship this, bro. They told you guys that this was Christ, even though you guys knew Christ was a black man, right? You guys still was keeping some of your old Hebrew customs, but the, the Europeans came over and they made you guys bow down to this, so you guys got killed. And this is an actual person. You know who this person is? This this is Caesar Borgia, right? This is he's speaking of, spoken about in the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon. But we're going I'm gonna get back into informing you on 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 your tribe because I know y'all short on time. So um, uh, I'm a, I want to get this other scripture right. What would you say like your position in America? How do you feel about uh, about this place in America? Like you feel like you guys are being oppressed? You feel like we all being oppressed? You don't feel like it? How 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 not? Give me Baruch real fast. Three and eight. By oppress, uh, uh, oppression, man. The fact that you gotta wake up and uh, you gotta work, or what some of our people have to do, they have to do things that's un that's unseemly, man. Just for us to put food on our table, just for us to provide for ourselves and stuff like that. The fact that you gotta walk down the street and, and look over your back. Oh yeah, exactly. A, a, a prime example. Um, your, your, our, our children are in CPS custody at the border, man. Prime example with that, that that brother just said, right? Our babies are in cages at the border and stuff like that. Especially the, the Latinos, right? That's that's a form of oppression right there. How is it that another man can take your children away from you unrightfully, man? Like that, right? And just throw them in a cage while they while they're dying, getting sick, getting raped, who, and who who knows uh, what else? What else, right? But we can see that this oppression is uh, is all around us, right? Because the fact that you got to look over your shoulder when you walk down the street, whether it be for a police officer or another brother trying to kill you, man, that's oppression, man. And it's a sick mindset that we we've, we've been we've been trained and conditioned with, right? You got that in group three and eight. But this is also what I was talking about, right? The Bible talks about all this. Go ahead. This is Baruch, chapter three, verse eight. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We are yet this day in our captivity, right? Meaning, meaning, we, we, we still even from that scripture back then, those from those ancient times all the way to now, because this isn't our first slavery that we've been in, right? This is our seventh. From the ancient time to now, we're still we're still in captivity, bro. We still in slavery. Go ahead. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, for thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. And to be subject to payments. And to be subject to what? Subject to payments. It said we were we were scattered over here for a reproach and a curse, right? Before you get that, go to Jeremiah uh, 17 and 4. Or, or, or you go to Deuteronomy. It says we, we, we were scattered over here for a reproach and a curse. What's that curse talking about? It's talking about Deuteronomy 28, right? We're going to get a couple verses out of this. Because the reason why this is happening to the black and Latino people, right? And we're in this system of oppression... And it's, it seems like it's focused only on us is because everybody else knows that we're God's chosen people. We're the only ones that don't know that. And the Lord, even though they tell you the Bible and they tell you about God, oh God, all this, he's always happy and forgiving all the time. The Lord judges people, man. And he, he, he judges nations. So we're being judged as so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans as a nation because we stopped listening to God. And that's the thing the church wants you to do. They want they don't want you to listen to God. That's why they tell you, eat the chicharrones, eat the eat the pork, uh, uh, don't keep the laws of God. They were done away with because they, they know if if we keep these laws of God, it not only teaches how to treat ourselves, our body, but it teaches us how to treat the rest of our people, man. And we stop seeing each other as enemies. I don't go down the street and mug another brother just because he's black or he's Latino. You feel me? I, I, I'll, I'll look at him like he's my own brother because he's it. He is. Go ahead. 28 go to um go to go to 40 verse 45 start at some of the curses you got that psalm dirty right 70 73 and 5 this is the book of deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 45 actually read verse bit verse 1 and then read verse 15 and then we'll go to 45 go ahead 
Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse, verse 1. So this was, you familiar with Moses and the Israelites? So Moses, right, the, he's a, a profound figure in the, in, in the Bible. Like, uh, uh, and in church, they talk about him too, right? They talk about Moses parting the Red Sea. I'm sure you heard of that, right? He was, he was uh, with, uh, with, with uh, his nation of people, which were the Israelites. And they were... Um, they were they were um, slaves to the Egyptians. This is how you also know that the the Bible is talking about melanated people, right? People of color like me and you, because Moses um, was living under the Egyptians at one point. If he was a, a, a white boy or anything like that, like they try to make it seem, how was he blending in with the Egyptians, which were proven to be dark people, right? So we were th these were all melanated people. The the Latinos and the Negroes and the natives were all slaves in Egypt underneath the Egyptians, right? So, yeah, that's how we build pyramids. That's why you guys got pyramids in, in Mexico and all over the Americas, because you guys built that, right? That was our people, right? Them, them funky-ass Egyptians didn't make that, man. Uh, now, a little background information. Moses was the person that was dealing with the Lord uh, uh, individually, right? Because the rest of our nation basically was too frightened by the Lord, and the Lord only wanted to deal, deal with Moses, and he was having Moses... Uh, relay his message back to the people, right? So this is what Moses was telling the congregation of the Israelites, right? Uh, what was gonna, what, what was, what the Lord had told him? Just go ahead and read it. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter chapter twenty-eight, verse one. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to, to observe and to do all His commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations on the earth. Wait, he's gonna do what? what? I, thought, I thought that was about equality, go ahead. Set thee on high above all nations of the earth. It's no equality with the Lord, because if it was equality, why, why is he choosing a, a people to put on high above everybody else, right? He said, if these people listen and keep the commandments of God and, and listen to the Most High God, then the Most High God is going to take these people, which were the black, Latinos, and Native Americans, and make them rulers on the whole earth, right? Now read verse 15, right? Because verse 1 to, uh, to, to 14 lists out all the blessings the Lord would have gave us. Land, uh, uh, wealth, you know, fortune, uh, 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 a sanctuary as far as like safety and stuff like that, right? But go ahead. Verse 15. It but it shall come to pass... If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, if we don't listen to the, the, the Lord God, what's going to happen? To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So it just said, if they didn't listen to God, they were going to be cursed, right? We're going to read out some of these curses, and you tell me if you can see any of these things happening today, right? Because I could just be a person up here lying to you. We're going to let the Bible talk, and you can you can answer it for yourself, right? Go to, no, nah, don't even go to verse 45. Let me see. Read a couple of, uh, let me see, let me see. What's that? Uh, I think it's 32. Read 32. It should be about the, the groping at noonday. Oh, 28 slot. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, read, read that. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 28 the Lord shall the Lord shall smite thee with madness uh -huh. so that's talking about mental illness right he said he's gonna, I'm gonna smite you with madness right go ahead and blindness, blindness meaning whether it's physical, like you're physically blind or spiritually blind right because you can't go ahead and astonishment of heart and astonishment of heart right go ahead verse 29 and thou shalt grope at noon at noon days as the blind gropeth in darkness. You see that man right there, bro? That was just sleeping on the floor right there? Because he was he was laid out wasted? That's a prime example of what that's talking about. He's groping at noonday. It's not even dark yet. It's not even dark yet. He's 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 drunken out of his mind, bro. That's what that's talking about right there. The Lord's putting all the all the examples right in front of our face, bro, but it's for us to see that, right? Go ahead. Go to oh, it's more, go ahead. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. 
gonna be a president, nobody's gonna save you, right? That's why Martin Luther King and uh, uh, Cesar Chavez and all these other people that were supposed to be these big leaders for us, it didn't, it didn't do anything for us because it wasn't, it wasn't out of the Lord, man. The Lord didn't send those people for that to happen, right? Go to 45 real quick. Let's get to some main points. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee. These curses are going to pursue you, meaning no matter where you go in the world, these curses are going to follow you, man, because your bloodline is who you are, right? Go ahead. And overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. For what? For a sign. These curses are your sign. No, you like that. And for a wonder. Uh -huh. And upon thy seed forever. And upon your, your seed, meaning your children forever. No matter if you have kids, I have a kid. Uh, um, or from basically that's that's from all the way back then to now. And these curses are still uh, upon us, right? And that's that sign, right? The fact that we have we have to teach our children. Oh. Don't move like this in the world because you might get killed to gang by this or a police officer might kill you. Don't do this or don't do that because this might happen to you, right? This is that curse that it's talking about. Go to, give me verse 56. Watch this too. This is about our people. Well, just go ahead. Verse 56. Verse 56. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 59 through 60 Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful And the plagues of thy seed even great plagues And of long continence, continuance And sore sickness and of long continuance Verse 60 Moreover he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt All the diseases of Egypt right and what else? Which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. 61? Verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. So it says, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. I like to bring this scripture out because do you do you eat pork or anything? That's you know that's a sin in the Bible, right? We're not supposed to eat that. You know why it's a sin? Go to, the, go to that and hold the other one. It's a sin, bro, because no matter how much they tell you how good that BLT is, how good that bacon, how good that pig is, the Lord, people got to understand, the Lord doesn't tell us not to do things just because he's the Lord and he's like, oh, just don't do it. He, he, he has that ability and he has that right to do that, but he's telling us for our own good. When you eat, when you eat pork, what pork does to you is the fact that it's such an unclean animal is it releases bacteria into your body. More bacteria that makes your body eat at itself too, right? So, you, a lot of people can say this with other meats and this and that, but that's not the case, right? Because the pig, it, it doesn't sweat, one, it doesn't have any sweat glands, so it can't it can't excrete its bacteria. Two, it has this little spout out, out of its paws or its, uh, its hooves that, that uh, drains out sewage, bro. So it's one of the most unclean animals you can eat, bro. It, it literally, it, it kills us. So read that part again. And it gives you it gives you tapeworms too. It gives you worms in your brain. Go ahead. Read, it. Read that part again. Watch this. Yeah, with the sickness. Watch this. Uh, verse sixty-one. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So, do you have anybody in your family that has quote unquote hereditary diseases like heart disease, cancer? Here's the thing. It's not hereditary at all. The thing that's hereditary is bad eating habits. The fact our people like to eat uh, pork and seafood that doesn't have fins and scales, that's what the Lord told us to eat. If you're gonna eat something out the water, eat, eat, the, eat the fish with fins and scales. We like to eat crab, lobster, all these things that they made a delicacy, which is garbage. All these things that they tell us that is good and these BLTs and, and whatnot, all those things is bottom feeders, man. I can, if somebody was to drop dead right now, we can literally grab their body throw it in a pit uh, of pigs and the pigs will eat it. They'll, they'll damn near eat the bone too. That's how dirty of an animal it is and you're, you're, you're putting that in your body, right? 
Go to read that in Leviticus real quick. So those sicknesses that the Lord is 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 referring to as well is that cancer that we get, right? The uh the diabetes, the uh uh heart disease, all this and that, right? High cholesterol, bro, that's where that comes from. Because when you eating animals like pig and lobster and stuff like that, what they do is the that the the cells in the uh, bacteria in that in that animal it um it causes your, your your cell membrane right your mucous membranes to to basically enlarge it and excrete more mucus into your body which makes you m more sick that's why you find yourself sick so much if you eat those things right go ahead look at, Le look at Leviticus chapter eleven verse seven and the swine though he divideth the hoof and be clothed footed. Yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh ye shall not eat. So, oh, go ahead. Of the flesh ye shall not eat. And the carcass ye shall not touch. We're not supposed to even touch a dead pig, bro. We see a dead pig, we're not even supposed to touch it. Because they, they're, they're, they're riddled and infested with disease, man. Right? Go ahead and give me 68. I'm going to give them a, a couple of the points, right? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Exodus 20 and 2. I'm going to show you a way of reading the Bible, right? Because it tells us to read it precept upon precept. You don't just read the Bible from front to back and, and understand it. You have to jump around in it to see what it's talking about because there's parables in it, right? So he said, the Lord is going to bring us to Egypt again, right? We just I just gave you the whole synopsis of Moses and the Israelites leaving out of Egypt. This is after they left Egypt, right? Say, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again, right? But let's see what he's talking about, right? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships. So if Moses and the Israelites walked out of Egypt the first time, what is it talking about they're going to come back on ships, right? What is that talking about? Book of, book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, the house of bondage. So the word Egypt in that, that verse is talking about slavery, bondage. So he said, I'm that Lord thy God that brought you out of the house of Egypt, uh, out of the house of bondage or slavery. And I'm, we're going to layman terms here for you right now. Go ahead, read it. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord shall bring you into slavery or bondage again. With ships. With ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. So what does that sound like? You're going to go into slavery or bondage on ships. And when you arrive at your destination, you're still going to be a slave. And nobody's going to save you from being a slave. That word redeem is talking about being, uh, being, being, or that word buy means to be redeemed, right? They call Christ the redeemer, right? So nobody other than Christ is going to save you out of you being a slave. We're still here in slavery today. Nobody saved us. So what is this talking about? What, what point in time did this happen to us? Precept? Uh, let me, let me, you know what that's talking about? You, you, did you know Mexicans went, went, went on ships? In the slavery? That's what that's talking about. Us coming from the uh, the transatlantic slave trade, basically. That That's what you can most commonly refer to. Even though we went in, uh, on ships a few times, that's what it's talking about, right? Go ahead. Is uh, Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. So it's saying you're going to lie in the, the, the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, right? The city is referring to a, basically a country. Spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. Don't they call San Francisco the new Sodom, the new Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Because all the homosexuality that, that happens over here and whatnot, this is the new Sodom. This is the new Egypt. Watch this, though. Uh, come, come check this out real quick, bro. Right? Like I said, we can't make this up. There's only so many things you can call a coincidence. Why is there a pyramid, an Egyptian pyramid, on the on the back of the dollar bill? And why is there an eagle, right? Give me that scripture and the eagle in, in Deuteronomy 28. They put it right in your face, man. These people know the Bible just like we do, right? They put it right in your face. You found that? Swift as an eagle. It should be like verse 48. Give me that, that Psalms, too. 
Because I'm going to read that song right after. You see it? 49 con. This Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. He's going to bring a nation against you from far, right? Go ahead. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. It's no coincidence that it's an eagle and in an Egyptian pyramid on the back of the United States dollar bill. And who we know, who we know, quote unquote, founded this place, even though we know that the indigenous people were actually here, the Europeans, right? So that's the nation that he brought over here from afar, who took up the symbol of the eagle, right? That's, that's, look at every European nation, Spain, Germany, America, Great Britain, they're all eagles, right? Go ahead. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Uh, no, nah, that's good, right? Precept, go ahead. Jeremiah 17 to 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. That's why we didn't know. That's why uh, Latinos or the Mexicans and the Puerto Ricans, they don't know that they're Israelites, right? That's why you ask a, a black person on the street, oh, or a so called black person on the street, hey, what are you? Where are you from? I'm from Africa. Bro, it's over 50 uh, uh, countries in Africa. Which one are you from, right? Uh, or uh, I'm black, I'm this and that, right? That's what it's talking about, right? Go ahead. For thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. He said, I'm a, you're going to serve your enemies. So the Lord said that we have enemies, right? We got we got enemies regardless what they, they, they try to tell us. The so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, you ain't realize yet we have enemies, man. Go ahead. Time. Exactly. Now read. Since we're talking about enemies, read 73, verse 4 through 5. Watch this. Uh, Book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 5. They are not in trouble as other men. Uh, it says they are not in trouble as other men. Talking about these other nations of people, right? Go ahead. Neither are they plagued like other men. Exactly. So they're not in trouble like other men. They don't have to duck gunshots every every other day or uh, uh, duck the police and run when they hear sirens and stuff like that. They're not they're not plagued with the same things that we're plagued with, right? So we know that this is talking about us, bro. So how are we? How do we get out of this situation? Let me ask you. I know I'm like laying a lot on you right now, but you know what I'm saying. How do we get out of this situation? Because how I like to put it, we have we have you know unlimited time to talk about bullshit. But it's it's very few times where our people actually sit down and talk about God and their situation in life, right? So how do we get out of this? All praises to the Most High. That's that's exactly how we do it. We. We, like you said, we do it by learning, learning our heritage of ourselves, learning the Bible, learning the laws of God, right? But it's also something we have to do, right? Give me uh, Ecclesiastes, right? Once we learn it, we have to do them and put them in, in action. And you give me James, uh, what's that, 1 and 4, I think. Give me James 1 and 4, I'm going to double check. All right? Let me see. Let me know when you got that too. Uh, almost there. Yeah. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter twelve, verse thirteen. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Oh yeah, you can get that cleanse your way precept too. That's the whole duty of man, right? That's this the whole the whole point of us telling you this is to fear God and keep his commandments, right? You love God? You love him? We going we we going to see, right? Cuz we give a lot of lip service, right? Give me the precept for 1 John 5 and 3, right? What's, what's love? How do you love somebody or how do you show somebody you love them? Good 
however you the best way you, i like the fact that you said spiritually that's the first you already go on the right route with that but whatever way you can describe to me how do you show somebody you love them right because it's more than just saying it to them right you feel me it's, it's more than just saying that so this, this we're going to show you how you show the most high you love him right got it by uh so like first john chapter 5 verse 2 by this we know that we love we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous that's how we know if we if somebody loves God or if we know if we love God because if we if we love him we'll do what he says right we'll, we'll, we'll do what he tells us to do man that's how you show somebody that you love him especially the creator the person that put you here and, and gave you the things that he gave you right give me first john 2 and 4 because it, it also has a flip side for people that just say it and don't do it right first john chapter 2 verse 4 first john chapter 2 verse 4 he that saith i know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar he that says he knows the Lord right or says that he loves the Lord right and doesn't keep his commandments as a what is a liar and the truth is not in him the truth is not in that person man because how you gonna say uh, that it's like somebody false claiming a gang or something man that's offensive right that's that's how the Lord feels about it right go ahead and is a liar and the truth is not in him but whoso keepeth his word in him barely is the love of God perfected. That's 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 how you make the, the love of God perfected. Watch this. This is the book of James, chapter 2, verse 18. Yeah, and man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Right? You hear the Christians in the church say this all the time. Oh, I have faith, man. Like, yeah, I got faith in God, right? Faith in God is going to save me. Go ahead. And I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. The same thing that James was saying, man. We saying the same thing to them, man. If you got faith, man, show me your faith that you have without your works. And the works is is, is the Lord's commandments, man. Doing what the Lord wants you to do. And how are you going to say you have faith and you don't have works? Like James said, I'm going to show you that I have faith by listening to the Lord. That's my works, bro. That's how I'm going to show you I have faith. And I and I truly love, love God, right? You know, you see these that be weird, bro? You feel me? Like, he got, he got, these are called fringes, right? Give me that in, uh, numbers, uh, uh, 1538. Um, uh, these are, these are called fringes. And then, I'm rocking them too, but, huh? Oh, yeah. How many commandments you think there is? They tell you it's 10, right? Yeah, just give a wild guess. Six, it's 613. 613 commandments that aren't grievous, right? They're... They're good for us, man, because they teach us how to run a perfect society, right? Don't sleep with your brother's wife. Don't uh, don't be a sorcerer. Don't uh, don't murder another black, Latino, or uh, Native American, right? All those don't steal from all these scriptures referring to what we shouldn't and shouldn't do is referring to us doing that to each other, right? Because when you look in the Bible and stuff like that, when, when I'm giving an example, I'm not telling you to go out and kill anybody either. I'm not I'm not telling you to do anything like that, but. If you look in the Bible and you look at stealing and uh, uh, and I'm not telling you to steal either because it's just not wise. It's, it's, it's not wise, right? Stealing and uh, uh, murder or, and all this killing and stuff like that. We look at scriptures and examples where we see David, which was an Israelite, killing hella uh, uh, heathens, right? Killing, killing, killing them off, throwing them off cliffs, chop, uh, sawing them in half. We look at... Um, when the Israelites left out of Egypt, we stole the Egyptians. We stole all their stuff, man. We stole their gold and everything, man. We took that with us. That's took. That's that's what that's talking about, man. Like all these scriptures is referring to us treating each other right. Like I can't take anything from this brother because he's an Israelite. I can't. Uh, and another thing is there's universal laws too. Like even if he wasn't an Israelite, he had a let's say he had a girlfriend or a wife. I can't sleep with her. That's just off. The Lord kill you for things like that, right? So like. That's why it's, we, we say that it's how you run a perfect society, right? You got a scripture? Yeah. Let's talk about these fringes real quick. 
This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So th that's what that's talking about, right? It's talking about these fringes that we have on, which is what your people uh, wore as well as my people, right? These are... Uh, these are these are these are tassels. How we remember to keep the commandments, like it was talking about, right? And we're supposed to wear them from generation to generation, meaning forever, right? Our kids supposed to wear them, and yeah, man, that's 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 just the the, the basics of the, of the foundation of learning the truth and, and keeping the Lord's commandments, man. This is what we're supposed to be doing, and, and uh, to better ourselves in our community, and we and, and get salvation to get about this hellhole, man. And once the Lord sees 144,000 of us, or everybody that he wants to be numbered, once he ha ha numbers off who he wants to get saved, then that's when Christ is going to come back, right? Don't don't think that it's just a myth that when they say Christ is coming back and stuff like that, because prophecies are being fulfilled. And the last thing I'm going to tell you is, you would very much want to take heed to this information. If you don't have a flyer, I'll have one of the brothers give it to you. But li listen to this information, bro, because you don't know when this is going to be your last day. A bullet can hit any one of us. The Lord can kill any one of us right now. But America will be destroyed by nukes, bro. And that's in the Bible. America's going to be blown up by nuclear fire, bro. Huh? Yeah, this will be the this will be the last scripture I give you, bro. I'm going to pass it off to the next speaker. Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So if you want to figure out, man, how to get on the straight and narrow or don't want to deal with the, the afflictions or the whatever might be going on in your life, man, take heed to this information, man. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Don't let anybody make you feel weird or square or like a nerd or anything like that because ain't nobody squares up here, bro. The, only, the, the Lord is looking for warriors, man. And don't let anybody tell you to fall away to the wayside because then people don't want to help you for real, man. But that's that's really all I got, bro. Um, if you got any information, you can talk to the next speaker. But uh, with that, I'm gonna say, call halal, y'all, bashim, y'all, shalom.